what's up all my musicians out there so youtube has been an incredible platform for me especially growing my music and getting noticed in so many different areas in case you didn't know youtube is actually the number one entertainment search engine on the entire internet and the second biggest search engine obviously second to just google and when it comes to youtube i always suggest it to so many musicians saying hey it's a great way to make money it's a great way to get your music noticed i mean it's just a powerhouse of a platform so in this video i want to talk about seven tips for musicians specifically related to youtube seo essentially how to optimize the youtube videos for a performance so that your music gets ranked as high as possible number one the artwork now as you can see here basically i'm just scrolling through my songs on youtube you notice all my thumbnails and also when you click on the video itself are colorful they're catchy and they basically jump out at you now right now youtube cares mainly about two different metrics one is ctr or click through rate the second is the avd or avp which is basically the average time that you watch a video jump into the first one ctr is click through rate meaning when someone sees your video on youtube how likely are they to click on it? If they're less likely to click on it, YouTube says, ah, you know what, this video just doesn't grab their attention. If you're, if you're more likely to click on it, YouTube will actually rank you higher. So if you notice, if I scroll all the way down, this is basically by chronological order, you notice that kind of in the past, this has a lot of blank space. It, it's not catchy. So what I decided to start doing then is basically make it full screen. As you can see here, you know, obviously I did uh, some songs about the Supernatural TV show. So I made sure to have the characters in the shot itself. I had the car here. So I then started changing up my strategy to then making it so that I have these very colorful pictures that jump out at you. And I know it sounds kind of weird because when I talk about getting your music noticed, no one really thinks of the artwork, right? You're like focused on making good music, which obviously is the number one important thing. But even on like, let's say Spotify or another platform, having a catchy artwork and a catchy album cover is massive what i actually do now is i actually make two album covers i actually do all my own artwork so what i do is i'll make one specifically for district kid when i release it so that way it goes on itunes spotify amazon blah blah, blah. i'll make one for that then i'll make a second one purposely just for youtube because in case you didn't know the aspect ratio for artwork on like say every other platform is a square on youtube it's basically 1280 by 720. So what I'll do is I'll actually make what we consider more of a longer one or a rectangle as opposed to a square. As you can see for like Ruta Valley or Brazil, some of my most recent releases to Sugru, I'll actually make two different artworks. And this is massive for people who are looking at basically your song from a distance. As you can see, I kind of look at it sometimes as a small square. I mean like, oh, you know what? That's kind of like a cool little picture. I'm gonna click on it, see what this is about. Number two, the name of the song. Now this is huge for SEO purposes, and in case you don't know, SEO stands for Search Engine Optimization. Essentially, when you search something on YouTube, how does one video rank or outrank another video? And one thing I realized when it comes to my music is that by doing songs about certain things, one, I'm able to capture a different audience from somewhere else, but two, I'm now able to get some of that traffic from people searching those terms itself. So for example, with my track to Sugru Shimizen, Shimizen is actually a Japanese instrument. I noticed people were actually just Googling Shimizen or Shimizen music. And then Tsugu is actually part of Japan. And some people even use Tsugu to call like Tsugu Shimizen a certain style of music. So by calling it Tsugu and then Shimizen in the parentheses, not only am I kind of immediately telling you what the song's about, it's like a Japanese EDM song that I made, but I'm now getting traffic by people literally just Googling or going on YouTube searching Tsugu Shimizen. You know, another one is basically DDR. I made a song using the old school kind of acid house style of DDR. So I literally call the song DDR in parentheses Dance Dance Revolution. That way if someone Googles or goes on YouTube and searches for Dance Dance Revolution, my song could pop up. Same with DDR. And this is true for Spotify and other platforms as well. You know, going down more, TikTok Dance Cake. Now, the order of that warning was very key for me. So TikTok, obviously TikTok's huge right now. So I actually get a lot of people, not only on YouTube, but actually on TikTok, using this song because they go to put a song in one of their videos. They just search eh, TikTok, whatever. Then I put TikTok dance, because TikTok dance actually is another word. And then dance cake, obviously cake is kind of like a slang term people use for like booty and whatnot. So I decided by calling it TikTok dance cake, even though it seems kind of like a cheesy phrase, it's optimized by optimizing for TikTok. I'm optimizing for TikTok dance. I'm optimizing for TikTok dance cake. And I'm also optimizing for dance cake itself. So I'm optimizing for numerous different keywords within the title. So anytime someone YouTubes that, boom, you know, a lot of people actually go on YouTube and search TikTok dance. How do I do this TikTok dance? Boom, my song can pop up. Um, you know, obviously I have, I've done songs about Christmas. 
So obviously I have that there. You know, Bill Burr, I did a song kind of combining a joke he made about EDM and electronic music. Then going down, Alex Honnold, basically the amazing rock climber who free soloed Al Capitan at Yosemite. So I made a song about him, Lift My Uber. I have a song basically, and that way I put Lift and Uber in it. So that way that can get ranked. Bob Bazaar, uh, basically a bunch of, you know, theories about him potentially work on alien spacecrafts, kind of like an interesting story. So I did a song about him, and then a big thing he talked about was an element called Element 115, which is Moscovium. So we did that. So as you can see, as I go down, a lot of these songs, you know, Goodfellas about the movie Wise Guys. Taco Bell, obviously, you know, is another one. Uh, now, 1967 Chevy Impala. So one thing I say to a lot of people is, one, can you make your song with anything like a person, place, thing, idea, any type of concept so that people actually go on it and Google it, not even trying to look for a song. Like, I've had people hit me up. Uh, I'll show you an example. I did an album about the Supernatural TV show because I like the TV show. So as you can see, I have like Sam Winchester, Jared Padalecki, Dean Winchester, Jensen Ackles, you know, Castiel, Misha Collins. And I, people hit me up saying, hey, Mark, you know, I actually was looking for something about Sam Winchester or about Jared Padalecki. Your song popped up. I'm not going to lie. I don't like EDM. Not my thing. But I love your song because it's kind of cool how you represented his character or his personality in the show in musical form. And so when it comes to naming your songs, if let's say, you know, we've all been there, you know, when you're like, oh, you know what? I don't even know what to call this song. I don't know what to name it. Try to think of any way you can name your song about something else or some other concept or some other just thing in general so we can get traffic not only for people listening to music, but from that other area as well. Number three, a keyword rich description. Now, anytime you upload anything on YouTube, YouTube scans the title, the thumbnail, uh, the description, what you're saying in the video itself. They're trying to figure out, okay, what is this video about? So that we know exactly who to show this video to. Now, one of the best ways to do this for your music is having keyword rich description, not even related about the song itself, but things around it. So a good example of this is my track, Gruta Valley. It's basically my remix of Gruta Valley from Zelda Ocarina of Time. I absolutely love the song, and I think Ocarina of Time, one of, if not the best game of all time. So not even related to music, but as you can see for this description, I wrote The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Now, what I'm doing is I'm purposely doing that because I'm now optimizing it for Ocarina of Time. So if someone goes on YouTube and searches that, this song could pop up. I'm also doing Zelda Ocarina of Time. I'm also doing Legend of Zelda. I'm also doing Zelda itself. So I'm basically doing what's called keyword stacking. So the Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, I also have soundtracks. Now I'm obviously optimizing for Ocarina of Time soundtrack. A lot of people on YouTube say, hey, I want to listen to the song from the Ocarina of Time soundtrack or Zelda Ocarina of Time soundtrack. Then I have is one of my favorite video game soundtracks. Now, although it sounds a bit wordy or a bit redundant, I'm purposely doing this because now I know if people go and Google video game soundtracks, this could pop up. Then I have Grudo Valley Ocarina of Time. A lot of people go on YouTube and search Grudo Valley Ocarina of Time song. You know, here's my Grudo Valley remix. Obviously, a lot of people do that. So what I'm trying to do right now is basically optimize this video, not even just for the song itself, but for basically any elements or ideas around the song, or basically any keywords around the song that someone could be searching for, and then boom, my song could pop up. I also have another shout out here. I said, shout out to Nintendo. So that way I'm now optimizing for Nintendo. And then Koji Kondo, I'm also optimizing it for, who basically created the song. He's a musical genius, honestly. Now, if I scroll down, as you can see too, in my meta tags, I have here, you know, a um, bunch of different ones, but I'm optimizing this for Gruta Valley, Ocarina of Time, Ocarina of Time soundtrack, Zelda, Zelda Ocarina of Time, Zelda Ocarina of Time soundtrack. I know this seems a bit redundant again, but it's optimizing for so many different keywords. So I basically have all these different concepts, and then I make sure that anything I put in my meta tags here, I'm also putting in my description up at top. Number five, the genre. Now, in addition to basically having a keyword rich description, I always suggest putting as many genres as you can. And I know right now, I, I think it's like the cool things to be like, oh, I'm, I'm genreless. I don't have a genre. But on YouTube, at least try to think of ways you could say, okay, my song is a combination of buh, 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 and buh, right? So as you can see here, I first do kind of the optimization for Ocarina of Time, like I just said, but then I have blending elements of Moomaton, Afro House, and Tribal House. So that way, if anybody goes on Google and searches for Moomaton or Afro House or Tribal House, my music will pop up. You know, another good example of this, I'll just pick one of my songs on my most recent album. I'll do um, Ring the Alarm for my album mashup to bass. So we have this to pop up. So if you notice here, I did a bunch of different kind of keyword stacking specifically related to genres. So I have this track, for example, track number three, is it combines trap music. So I'm optimizing it for trap and trap music, dubstep, dubstep music, reggae and Caribbean. And then I also have a media description of the album itself. So I'm now optimizing it for dance hall, dance hall music, reggaeton, reggaeton music, 
Caribbean, Caribbean music, reggae, reggae music, and tropical, tropical music, and then electronic, electronic music, and then bass music. Then going down here, as you can see, I have up at top, you know, entertainment, viral, trending, music, EDM, Mark Vichero, obviously my name, dance music, DJ, electronic music, Vichero, Vichero music, dance hall. So I'm now optimizing for all these different genres. And that's a big thing I have to stress because I know a lot of times people don't want to say what their genre is. They're like, no, I'm genreless. And that's cool. You can be genreless. But remember that even genreless itself is still a combination of subsets of the newest different genres, even if it's super broad. Even if you're like, you know what? I don't really have a genre, but I like making electronic music. Put electronic music or EDM or music because now I'm optimizing for all these keywords. So any single time someone's like, you know what? I really want to listen to um, some Rastafari music. Boom, this song could pop up. If they want to search for, you know, Mumaton music or Mumaton or Caribbean music or whatever the case is, I'm now optimizing for that specific genre. So hopefully people will click it and then listen to it. Number five, playlists. Now, as you can see for me, I have all my music located in one playlist called Vichero Music. And this is very important because that way, any single time someone plays one of my songs, they're more likely algorithmically to now see another one of my songs. Big pro tip is if I say someone's like, hey Mark, can you send me your song Brazil, right? Rather than send the video, I'm gonna send the video link within the playlist. So if I do this and I open it up, you notice I get all this kind of uh, random stuff up here. But if I copy and paste this and send it to them, right? It's kind of a weird ad. Um, but if I send them this link itself, now when they play it, it's gonna look like this. So I'm gonna just hit enter. So now when I have it loaded up, you notice that basically the playlist is on the right. And I'm not just sending them the video link, but I'm sending the video link within the metadata of the playlist. In addition, when I go to the description, you notice I have all of Vichero's music in one playlist. This is huge because one big thing YouTube loves to see is session watch time. What that means is when you go on YouTube, how long can you keep someone on YouTube? As you can imagine, YouTube wants people to be on there as long as possible. If YouTube sees that they watch one of your videos or listens to one of your songs and then X's out or clicks out, YouTube is like, eh, hey, okay. But if YouTube sees like, oh wow, you know, they, they listen to Brazil by this Vichero guy and then they saw this here and they click it, now they're staying on YouTube longer, right? So now they go to the playlist. They're like, oh, so this is the rest of Vichero songs. Oh, let's listen to, I don't know, Joy to the World, and then blah, 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 blah. So this is a great way to really, really keep people on YouTube for longer. The longer that someone stays on your YouTube channel, the higher it's gonna rank your videos. And obviously, like I said, the higher your videos rank, the more people are gonna listen to your music. So having a playlist for all your music and especially each individual album as well, is a great way to keep people on YouTube for longer. Number six end screens. Now, in case you don't know, an end screen, and I do this in all my videos on this channel, an end screen is essentially something that when the video is about to end, it says, hey, if you like this video, you might like these videos. So I do this manually. So essentially, let's say I have a song like this, Cannonball by Radio Company, which is basically Jensen Ackles' band, you know, Jensen Ackles being from Supernatural. If you go down to end screen, what I'm basically doing is I'm saying, hey, if you like this, you'll also like this. So I also remix another one of their songs called Bound. So basically, when the song's about to end, as you can see, it's 20 seconds. 20 seconds before the song ends, before the video ends, I say, hey, you like this? You might like this video as well, or this song. And that's a great way for people, when it pops up, as it's about to end, they're like, oh, wait, he also remixed another song by Radio Company? Boom, I'm gonna click it and listen to it. I also do this for one of my albums. So like say on my most recent album, showing you again, Master of the Bass, if I go to... Um, you know, let's say the, the first song. So now you'll see I have the end screen loaded up here. I basically the next song in the album. So I not only use end screens for relatable songs. I'm like, okay, if they like this song, they might like this song, but I also use it for albums. So I have like track one, go to track two, track two, go to track three, so on and so forth. And last, but definitely not least, is a signature in your videos. Now this is big because one of the biggest ways people like to discover music on YouTube and other types of content is actually through suggested videos. YouTube likes to keep you on the platform for as long as possible, like I said. So one technique YouTube does is says, okay, we're gonna try to find videos that are similar to this other one. So for me, I post this basically description in every single one of my videos. That way, one, YouTube says, okay, this description's in all these videos, that means they must be somewhat similar, so we're gonna recommend more videos in the suggested video sidebar. In addition, number two, is that if someone doesn't know me, they get to know me through this. So I basically have Mark Pachero as an EDM artist slash DJ and YouTuber. Boom. So that way someone's like, oh, you know what? I like this song. Let me check it. Oh, wow. This guy's an EDM artist. You know what? I like EDM. 
I'm gonna subscribe or I'm gonna watch more of his videos. Then they have like a mini tagline. Now for me, obviously, I don't just have videos about my electronic music, but as I say here, my channel blends elements of entertainment, electronic music, adventure, travel slash traveling, trending viral videos, nightlife and nightclubs, party vlog experiences, and more. So that way, if someone's like, okay, you know what? I like his music, but oh wow, he has vlogs as well. That's pretty cool. Then they have a link here to listen to my music. Now I have YouTube, Spotify, iTunes, and SoundCloud. I also have smart URLs here, so basically I can track who's clicking on what. You can add however many you want. One big thing I am gonna say is YouTube doesn't like it when they click out of YouTube, right? So keep that in mind. That's why if you actually notice, I have YouTube first because I'm hoping someone will click on YouTube and stay on YouTube. If they click on Spotify, well, YouTube sees that, boom, they bounce out of YouTube. So I try to keep them on YouTube as longer than I follow me online here. This is just to grow my online presence. And as you can see here, I don't have links. So I have Twitter, at Mark Vichero, Instagram, at Mark Vichero. So if somebody wants to follow me and I want to gain a bigger following, I'll actually just have this here so they have to type it in. That way they're basically not clicking on YouTube. But having a signature, I think, in every one of your videos is a great way, like I said, one, to make your video seem a lot more similar to YouTube, so it suggests more of them. And two, it's a big thing because that way people can get to know you. They can make, oh, wow, you know, I didn't know that Mark also makes vlogs. I didn't know that Mark also likes to do traveling videos or whatever the case is.